yours. Good evening, everyone. This is Deacon Up coming to you again from Power in Unity Ministries. Again, we ask you to give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up. There they are. And also subscribe to our ministry. And let's get this word out because God has said for me to encourage the people in his word. And I know it seems like the last three days he has been really concerned about people who are not close to him, people who are sinners, people who are have walked away, people who have been sluggish, so to speak. And I point fingers back at myself. I see many things that I haven't done that I should be doing or or should have done. And and I have to repent just like everybody else has to repent. There's no big eyes and little ears. There's no nobody who's greater than the than the next one. God's love is just pours out. He is the agape love. It doesn't have beginnings and endings. It doesn't have, um, uh, what is the word I'm searching for, Lord? It doesn't, it, 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 it is for everybody. It, it doesn't have conditions. That's the word I'm looking for, for you, him to love you. He loves you when you were conceived in your mother's womb. He loved you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Before I get started, I want to also tell you that if you have prayer requests and you don't want them known on the set, just, just email me at the initial D, K-N-U-P-P 26 at yahoo.com because I've had people ask me for prayer and we put them on the prayer wall. I want you to know they're on the prayer wall, each one that has asked for that. And that is a thing that we we need to pray over always. Um but we've even had a, a written answer to prayer already. So God is good and he does answer prayer. Well, today I thought um, I had an um, appointment this morning, so I didn't I wasn't able to been challenging hit, challenging this last couple of weeks. But anyway, not getting into any of that. I thought I was going to do a, a lesson on perseverance because I had just read an article on this amazing guy, Raymond Berry, who was a great football star. And he had was born with one leg shorter than the other. And so he was, you know, kind of different, not able to play like, you know, even his father that coached wouldn't allow him to coach uh, to play until he was a senior in high school. And he went on to teach himself. He had teach, taught himself um, 88, I believe it was 88 different ways to move and to where he would be able to catch the ball. He was a great, uh, well, I don't know what you call it, he caught the ball, in other words. <laughs> and he was one that helped bring um, the Colts to six victories in the, in the Pro Bowls. So, I mean, it persevered no matter against all the things were against him. He persevered and went in until he won. He won. And um, so I'm thinking, you know, okay, Lord, because I had just talked to somebody and, and perseverance seemed to be the thing that I needed to say, But God changed my mind and he does that a whole lot. He knows exactly what we need to hear, not just you. But when I point a finger, there's four pointing back at me. What I need to hear as well as what you need to hear. But the word that he gives me is giving me to give to you. It's not words he's given me in the past. It is words he's given me to give to you. Because I said, give me fresh, fresh words, fresh visions, Lord. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The only vision I saw this morning was very clear and very short. And it was like I could see these dark clouds come and hover. And they were hovering in such a way that all we had to do was say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And his light became so bright that it dissipated. Every one of the dark clouds, they just totally disappeared. What is he says in, in, um, in John, the first, the first chap, chapter in John says, the word was with God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And there was nothing made that was made that was made without him. Everything that was made with him, that he is the life and the light in every man and light the darkness did not comprehend the light. Praise be unto God. So it dissipated. It went out. 
And when he was giving me those words, I could see these dark clouds just disappear and his light shine so bright that whoever that was covering, it just totally disappeared and they were in the presence of the Lord. So what he was wanting to talk about today um, is grace, his amazing grace. I thought, well, I thought it was going to be perseverance, <laughs> but God knows what we what we need. Now we all know that there is much we can say about grace. Books have been written about the grace of God. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of what he gave me to tell you and others. And so many of you, you're into the prophetic. You're into to the word of God. You're, you probably know a lot more than I know in, in the word of God. But um, it's out there for somebody. Somebody needs this. And that somebody has got four fingers, fingers pointing back at me. He just wants us to know that his amazing grace is a gift to whosoever comes to Christ. This is what he gave me today. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. We cannot earn it. We cannot work hard enough for it. And we cannot buy it. God forbid. It is a gift from God through his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. We are set free in Christ so that we may enjoy the presence of God. Hallelujah. Not to obtain his favor and grace because that was done through Christ's blood when he hung on the cross. We are set free in Christ so that we may enjoy the presence of God as we draw close to him. Getting to know him as our closest friend, our provider, our protector, our healer, our defender, our avenger, our sword, our shield, and our hiding place. That's how we, we continue to get to know him. Praise be unto God. And then he gave me these two scriptures to bear out everything that he has said just then. And then he gave what he has said in this scripture and in this little bit of reading here. He has given it in poetry for you to enjoy and for me to enjoy <laughs> He just amazes me when he speaks. I mean, he says it's right here. And then he says, all right, let me just say it this way. And then he turns around and he gives me some more poetry. He's so amazing. Ephesians 2, 1 through 9. And you he made alive, hallelujah, who were dead in trespasses in sin, in which you once walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the same who are disobedient, among whom also we all were, conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. Oh my goodness, the glory of the grace of God. We were once there, but Jesus made us alive. I think about the three main things that God hates, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that's what we were all into. That's what happened to the Jews so many times. They would cry out to God. God would deliver them. God would bless them. And then they would turn again, believing they had done this. They don't need him anymore. They put him back on a shelf. And Jesus saw this isn't going to work. The blood of bulls, the blood of goats, the blood of, blood of doves just isn't working. I want them to be set free. 
And the only way they can be set free is through pure, holy, righteous blood. So he sent his son. And his son willingly gave his life. Did he did he uh, uh, agonize? Yes. The word said he was in the garden and his sweat became like great drops of blood. He agonized and he said, Father, can this not pass from me? Because he had seen how the crucifixions go. And Jesus said, no, this is, God said, no, this is the way it has to be. And he surrendered. And when he fell beneath the cross as they went up Calvary's hill, they, he fell, and, but he looked out in the distance and he saw generations upon generations upon generations that would need him. And he got back up and walked all the way up to Calvary's hill. Laid down upon that cross and allowed them, allowed them, you hear me? Allowed them to put nails in his hands and feet. Oh, Jesus. Slam that cross into the, to the ground. I had to tear his flesh. His back already torn from the beating. He did that for you and for me. There was no human born that could do it. There, 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 there. Bloodline was messed up from the garden where Adam and Eve sinned. Oh, I didn't know where all that came from. I know it came from the Holy Spirit. Somebody needed to hear. He gave it all. You say, well, he was his mom was it was a human. She had tainted blood. Oh, <laughs> but remember at the conception what happened. The father overviewed her, the Holy Ghost, and purified her blood. And the Holy Ghost planted the seed of Jesus in her womb. First, God hovered over her, purifying her blood. Her husband, um, Joseph, did not even know her until after the Savior was born as a wife. Because her blood would have been tainted. But it was she was made holy before God. To carry his son who died for you and I. <sighs> Hallelujah. Okay, let me see where I was. We were once fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as others. But God, <laughs> I've said this to so many people all around the world, but God is my two favorite words. When I hear negativity out there, when I hear I can't, when I hear Oh, this can't possibly happen or, or this is what went down. And, and, and I hear this bombarding of negative thoughts. I say, but God, I can remember I was in a meeting at a friend's house one time and this lady who come out was talking against what was coming against Israel. And it was all truth. It was all truth. So many nations coming, trying to destroy God's chosen nation of Israel. And every bit she was saying was truth. And it just wore up in me out of nowhere. I said, but God, but for God, these things would happen. But because of his amazing grace, Israel will never fall. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, my two favorite words. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you are saved and raised up us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is what Jesus did. This is the power of his blood that in the ages 
to come, he might show the exceeding richness, richness of his grace and his kingdom towards us in Christ Jesus. All of it goes through Christ Jesus. We have that grace. We have that mercy. We have that power. We have that anointing. We have that righteousness because of the price Jesus paid at the cross. Because he shed his precious, holy, pure, divine blood. He might show his grace through Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Now you're going to see how this poetry he gave me is going to fill in all of this. It amazes me. He showed his, the rich, succeeding riches of his grace and his kingdom towards us in Jesus Christ. It's through him we live, we breathe, and have our being. It's in him, Jesus. <sighs> Hallelujah. By faith we are saved through Christ and his amazing grace. And this other one he gave me is Acts 8.20, which says you cannot buy it. Remember Simon the sorcerer thought he could buy this grace, this gift. Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. May your money perish with you is what he's saying. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You listen to what I said, and then you hear how he gave it to me in rhyme. He's amazing. He's amazing. God's grace to the earth was restored when on the cross Christ our sins he bore. His blood became the supreme sacrifice that day. Powerful enough, all sins he washed away. Uatalo Mosiah. Gloria Makushende Rimasikalaya. I just want to worship. I just want to praise. I just want to glorify him. If dark clouds have risen over you, repent. Call on Jesus, his light will burn through. This covered not only a sinner, repent, but it is over those who have become slothful and have sat down and not completed their job. Covers it, repent, call on Jesus. If dark clouds have raised, risen above you, repent, call on Jesus, his light will burn through. The dark clouds will disappear when to Jesus you draw near. Remember the vision, the dark clouds and the light of Christ shining through. Praise God. You cannot buy this amazing grace or do works to earn. It's a waste. It is free through Christ the truth, and the amen, he caused love to touch earth again. And John, 1 John, 1 John 4, 8 says, you do, if you say you love God and you have not loved, you do not know God because God is love. Let me read that again. It is free through Christ, the truth, and amen. He caused love to touch earth again. Remember the first one up here, God's grace to the earth was restored when on the cross Christ our sins he bore. Now he's saying because love now touched the earth again. Love penetrates through every wall when on Christ's name we call. His blood covers 
all sin to which all were born, when we repent, we are transformed. We were born into sin because of Adam and Eve's sin in the garden. Ooh, but through the blood of Christ, we are transformed. And now there is no condemnation in us for all old things have passed away and everything has become new. Ooh, hallelujah. Into, transformed into the image of our blessed Lord, to whom we now worship and adore. Changing our DNA to match his own. <laughs> no more to and from we roam. <laughs> it's so awesome. Now safe under his watchful eye, his word teaching us how to fly. Above the storms of life where there is no trouble, worry, or strife. When storms roll in, we hide in God's grace, the one who created all time, dominion, and space. Ooh, hallelujah. When you think about this God who created the galaxies, the worlds, everything that was created, he did it from nothing. He cared enough to save us, to send his amazing grace, his unmerited favor upon man. Into the image we were transformed, into the image of our blessed Lord, to whom we now worship and adore, changing our DNA to match his own, no more to and from to roam. Now safe under his watchful eye, his word teaches us how to fly above the storms of life where there is no trouble, worry, or strife. When storms roll in, we hide in God's grace, the one who created all time, dominion, and space. He watches over us like a mother hen and promises to be with us to age's end. He is our healer when we are sick. He does not do it by magic or trick, but by his sovereign power every day and every hour. He is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. Ooh, he is our every breath we breathe when Jesus Christ we receive. My Lord and my God. The word says to reach up and worship him. When we reach up, we touch his hem, causing his blessings to descend and more of our prayers to ascend. Woo, hallelujah. The word says to reach up and worship him. When we reach up, we touch his hem, causing his blessings to descend and more of our prayers to ascend. Worship first and then bring your petitions. The more we praise him, heaven stops to listen. Angels assign more treasures and gifts to be given. He is Jehovah Nisi. Our banner, mighty warrior, and victory. Woo! Hallelujah! He is everything we will ever need. He is, all he asks is that we bow a knee. Receive him as Lord, and he will cleanse our heart's core, and you will be safe forevermore. Woo! Hallelujah! If you can't shout with this, oh, I don't know what can make you shout. The more we praise him, heaven stops to listen. Angels assign more treasures and gifts to give him. He is Jehovah Nisi, our banner, mighty warrior, and victory. He is everything we will ever need. All he asks is that we bend a knee. Receive him, he's, his invitation. Receive him as Lord, and he will cleanse your heart's core, and you will be safe forevermore. His grace now covering you from head to toe, as in his words you continue to grow. 
Now you pick up your pace as you begin running your race, knowing now you will see him one day face to face, the one who saved you by his amazing grace. That's how he gave it to me in poetry after he spoke his word. Can you see it? Every word he spoke was written, and now it's in poetry. He is everything you'll ever need. All he asks is you bend a knee. His invitation, receive him as Lord, and he will cleanse your heart's core, and you will be safe forevermore. For the Spirit, the Spirit of God lingers in you always, calling, wooing. His grace now covers you from head to toe, as in the word you continue to grow. Now you pick up your pace as you begin running your race, knowing now you will see him face to face one day, the one who saved you by his amazing grace. Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Receive him into your heart today. If you've been slack or running amiss, uh, as the cloud, dark clouds have overshadowed you, all you have to do is say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Or in Ephesians, I believe it's the first chapter, he says, I have given him power over all authorities of the, of, of, of the earth, um, let me say it correctly. My Bible's not even in this room. I'm sorry. Uh, I was printing it in the other room. But in, he says he has all authority in heaven and earth, and all dominions and might and power is under his feet. He has all power and authority. So in his name, you have that authority to cause those clouds to go away and the light to come into your day. And that light is Jesus Christ. I got to go, but I want you to know I love you so, but God loves you so much more.